So the next concept that we're going to talk about as part of our work on this test case, and this is super important, something that we're going to come back to as we continue on through later checkpoints, is this idea of what's called a callback method or a callback function or just callback-based programming. This is a programming pattern that's new to us. This is not something that you've seen before. It does draw on some things that we've talked about, stuff like interfaces and other things. And so it is going to give us a chance to see some of these ideas in action. But the reason we haven't seen it is partly because it's a programming pattern that's very, very common when we build UI-based applications. All right, so here's the idea. You're building an app. Apps, most apps, 99.999% .99 of apps interact with the user. Those interaction patterns are driven by the user, not your code. You need to respond to them, but the user is the one who's doing things, clicking buttons, scrolling around, navigating the app, things like that. And so what we need is a way for our app to respond to things that the user does. And this is a, a weird idea, right? So far, the types of code you've been writing, we've been saying, okay, give it an input, we call your method, solve this problem, return a result. We haven't thought as much about when your code runs. Like, why does it run at a particular time? Like, it's run at a particular time because that's when the test, you, you ran the auto grader, right? Um, this is a little bit different. You're writing an app now, right? And so, for example, when the user clicks on a button, you might need to do something at that point in time, but you don't know when the user is going to click on the button, right? Like maybe the button submits some data or it takes them to the next screen or causes music to start playing or something, whatever. What the specifics of it are sort of up to you as you're creating your app. But there are these common needs to respond to user input in the UI that we want to talk about how to, how to handle. And this is, a, this is also a place where the Android platform comes into play because the Android platform is what's really supporting these programming patterns. So we already have some callback methods that are in code that we gave you. So I have mainactivity.kt opened up here. And if you see at the bottom, there are three methods that say called when, called when, called when, three of them. Um, these are callback methods. And I'm gonna show you where they're registered, so where we tell Android to use them, and then we're gonna look a little bit at how they work, right? But you might be wondering, like, again, when, so if I look in my code here, if I look for on query uh, change, uh, on query text change, it never gets called. And in fact, if I, if I, go, if I go here and I say uh, find usages, uh, it's going to say, um, I'm gonna say no. Uh, it's basically gonna say nothing found. It looked in all my code and it couldn't find anywhere that called this method, okay? And the reason for this is that this method isn't called by my code. This method is a callback method. Thank you. Go, okay, will you go away now? There we go. Uh, this is a method that's called by Android. The Android platform. And I tell it to call this method when a specific thing happens, right? Um, all right, so, so let's actually uh, run the app. Um, and I'm gonna put some logging in here, okay? So I'm gonna put logging, I'm gonna do log.i, I'm gonna use my tag, and I'm gonna say on query text change. Oh, no semicolons, thank you. And I have to import this. All right, good. Did that work? Are you just being slow with me? Come on. Yes, okay, good. Uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and, and run this in my emulator. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about this one down here. So there are actually, the, these on query text change and on query text submit, there are three callback methods here. Two of them, on query text change and on query text submit are associated with the query bar that's shown as part of the UI. So when the user interacts with that, these, a mixture of these two methods get called. Now, on a query text submit is called when the user hits enter. We're not gonna do anything special with enter. Some search bars do something special with enter, but we're gonna update the list as the user types. This is a much more modern experience, like sort of like Google Instant Search or something. Like This is kind of what users are used to now. They're not used to having to hit enter to get something to happen. They might actually be confused by that. Like, wait, I typed in you know, uh, Korean and it just sat there looking at me. It's like, you know, we'll, we'll just react as the user starts typing, we'll start showing them an updated list every time they make a change. So on query text change is called by Android every time the contents of the search bar 
are modified, right? Uh, okay, so now it's, it's gonna run and, uh, and I'm gonna type some stuff into the search bar. What I expect is to see this log tag in my logcat output. So let's open up logcat. Uh, I'm gonna filter on main activity. Um, and now that it's running, I'll say do, 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 do. And you can see it says on query text change, right? On query text change. I don't know what this other uh, thing is, but that's not, that's not important. Okay, um, cool. So let me talk a little bit about some of the other uh, things that are at work here. So you'll notice that my main activity implements, declares that it implements this interface called search view on query text listener. This is the use of interfaces. And the idea here is there's a contract that I'm establishing between this class and Android. Because the Android platform, in order to implement these callbacks, needs to know that I have provided the required functions with the right signature. And this is so a place where interfaces get used. Because there's a contract between the Android platform that's going to call these methods when the text in the search bar changes and my class. If I comment this out, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to remove this. And now we're going to see that there's a couple of problems. The first problem is uh, Kotlin complains that these override annotations aren't useful anymore because these are the two methods that I'm implementing in order to fulfill, to fulfill this interface contract. The other place that we see is where the callback is registered. So in onCreate, this doesn't happen automatically, right? There's very little magic about Android. Everything happens for a reason. The reason that I receive these callback events, the reason why these functions are called by Android is because I told Android to call them. I said, call these methods on this class when the search bar contents change, change and I did that right here. So if I go back, if I, if I don't uncomment this, the code won't compile. But if I go back and remove this line of code where I register the callback, this is known as registering a callback. I'm telling Android, hey, I've got these methods and I want you to call them when the inputs to this search bar change. So if I remove that, that call to register the callbacks and rerun the app, what you're going to see is that I'm no longer going to see that log message because these methods won't be called. And so there's really two steps I had to complete in order to get these callbacks to work. The first is I had to implement the right interface and provide the methods that respond to changes in the UI. The second thing is I had to register those in my onCreate method. And this is all documented. Like, you know, I, I figured out how to do this by reading the documentation. That's what you would have done as well. All right, so let's open up Logcat and just confirm that now if I type, let's see, AAA, yeah, nothing is shown, right? Because I didn't register my callbacks. Okay, cool. So there's actually three methods here that are callback methods. Uh, there's two of them associated with the search bar. We'll come back to those in a minute because those are the ones that you're, that's, this is the one you're gonna need to think about for the next test case. Um, there's also one that we're gonna work on for MP2 that's called onClicked. And this is used by the list library that we use to render the UI. And the idea is that one of the things that we might want to react to is if somebody clicks on one of the items. Let's say that someone wants to find out more interesting about more information about Alexander's Steakhouse and they click on it, we might want to respond to that. So in the same way, if you look up here, uh, we register a listener when we create this restaurant list adapter and that listener provides this event, right? So that, that listener uh, means that now this on click event will be called. And the cool thing about this is we actually get a restaurant object. Uh, so I'll say someone clicked on, and then I'll do uh, restaurant.name. And so all the information about the restaurant that we have loaded into the class is available to us here, right? Uh, and so if I rerun this um, and I'll click on a restaurant, you'll see that I get information about the restaurant that was clicked. And I'm gonna use that information as part of our next checkpoint, MP2, to modify the UI appropriately. Like we'll react to that because it seems to make sense. Like somebody wants more information about a particular restaurant, we'll write the code to make that happen, right? So if I click on Apple, Apple Dumpling, Aroma Cafe, Array Cafe, uh, you'll see that these are uh, being updated uh, or I'm getting this event uh, because I see the, the log message being, being generated. Cool, okay. Um, so this is, so, so you know, the, the the, the real reason we're talking about this is because this callback pattern is so important to interactive uh, user programming. This is something that gets used all the time when people are, are building you know, interactive user interfaces. 
Um, and it's also something that we'll come back and talk about when we uh, further on in the MP. So we're not done talking about callbacks. We're actually going to, you know, uh, use them uh, in a couple of other places and continue to come back to talk about this programming pattern, right? This idea that I don't know when something's going to happen um, and therefore I want to be notified when it does actually happen, right? Uh, let's come back and talk just for a, one more minute about this particular uh, callback for the query text um, for the search bar, right? And we talked about the Android platform. We said, you know, its job is to provide useful information to my app so that I can build an app using as many of its features as possible. And so an, an important thing we need to know when somebody enters text into the search bar is what did they enter? Like what is the current contents of the search bar? And you'll notice that on, theory, on, on query text change accepts a query parameter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick that in my log message. And so what you'll see now, and yeah, okay, it's upset about this, which is fine. I can fix that. Um, all right, so let's let's rerun this. What you'll see now is that when the callback method runs, it also has access to the contents of the search bar, and that is really all we need, right? Like at this point, if we think about, okay, I want to filter the list to show me only the restaurants that match this query, I do need to know what the query is, right? So I'll write test and you'll see that every time uh, I change it, I get this callback and it tells me what's the current contents of, of this particular search bar. And you know, if you, if you think about a search bar, like that's what I need to know, right? Like that is like the, all the information I need to know, right? Is that when is it changing? Which, it, which is expressed by when the callback method is called, and then what are the contents of every change? And if I have those two pieces of information, I should be able to now build an interactive UI that filters and does this live search, which is what we're going to implement next. So what we'll do next is we'll talk about kind of how to respond to these events, right? These UI events that are generated by the user um, and update the UI accordingly. But this pattern of using callbacks, right? So rather than calling a piece, so it's sort of backwards of what we've been talking about so far. We've been talking about you write a method and you call the method. What we're doing here is we're writing a method and we're giving it to some other piece of code to call at the right moment, right? So it's almost like, I don't know the right analogy. It's like if, if you were, I mean, to some degree, it's sort of like running a, 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 a business where you give out your phone number and people are supposed to call you when they have a problem. Like if you're a plumber, you know, you might give out your number or post it in the yellow pages. And the idea is when some, you don't know, you don't call a bunch of people in your neighborhood being like, do you need your sink fixed? They're like, no, like my sink's fine, right? I'll call you when I need it. And so we flip things around here, right? We tell Android when the search bar changes, notify me. And then Android says, okay, that's cool. I'll do that. I know when the search bar changes, right? I'm monitoring the UI. I'm drawing it. This component was implemented by, by engineers at Google. But I also know that for your app to work properly, you want to do something special when it's changed. And so I'll give you the ability to do that, right? So by registering these callback, by writing these callback methods, by registering them with uh, the appropriate parts of the system, we can build a UI that responds to user input.